Hello, good evening. Good evening. My name is Jacquees Lloyd. Nice to meet you. Give us a little background. How did you? Because uh, I, I think may, others may know you, but I don't know you. Say it again. Okay, let me see if I can turn the volume up here. Hold on this. I don't know how to do that. Um, okay. I'm trying to get it up. But we just wanted a little bit about yourself. Hold on. Okay. My name is Jacquees Lloyd. I'm 47. I'm currently unemployed at the moment. I attend Beulah Baptist Church. And I'm happy to be here, a part of this class. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh -huh. Hold on a minute. Okay, I've got the speaker up there and I have to go, so we'll just have to work with it. It's probably this mask. Probably the mask while you're in here. All right, let's get started. Anyone want to have anything to say? Uh, you've been reading your book. Did everyone get a book? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Because it's where you can download it. All right. And then if, once you download it, if you have a way of just making a copy for yourself, fine. If you don't, then, you know, you have to work with it. But I want you to be able to highlight a few things. Let's learn something about our church history. Did, did you all have a chance to do the reading background? The background reading? I read a little bit. I read some. I yeah. did read some. Yes. Mm -hmm. Background reading was the summary. If you look at your syllabus, the syllabus, and I think I sent that syllabus to you, Sister Boy. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And that syllabus says, Would you please read the summary of the Book of Acts? And, and that you can download. All you have to do is go to that link and read it because I want you to have a background of Acts so that you can see all the things that were happening in the apostolic church. And we said the apostolic church was the church when the apostles were still alive. When the apostles were still alive. We know that as, as the apostles began to uh, go out, there were some that, that, were, that had walked with the apostles. The apostles had <clears throat> disciples. And some of those disciples carried on. They carried on the ministry of the apostles of the church of Jesus Christ. But we also know that even before the apostles left off the scene, we already saw false teaching coming in. Is that right? Okay. We already saw false teaching coming in, and we put the scriptures for that. We, we were warned of that. Uh, the apostles warned us that the false teaching was already there in, in the Bible. And so most of all, all of the scripture, I'll say it like that, by the end of the first century, all the books were written. All the books of the Bible were written. But, you know, after that, uh, uh, different ones began to rise up and we see false doctrine. We see some heresies creeping into the church. We see men raising up and, and some are having power. We see, whereas the first churches began to be built, where they actually had churches. So we see a lot of things that are happening. We already gave the outline. If you have the outline, I asked you to get that outline. I'm gonna ask, give you other uh, links to, to church history outlines. So you can have that. But our Christian uh, outline, we looked at that and we said that when you look at it, we know that uh, the first century, the books were already written. All of, all of the literature, all of our Bible was written. So, but there are other books that want to creep in. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So we find that some churches, like the Catholic Church, have other books. Right. That we don't have in our canon of scripture. 
But we also find out that that didn't come easy because that's why certain men were raised up and they give us, they call them apologists. They call them different things that, that we see. They are the ones that fought to keep the canon or keep the books as they were. And that took something. That that we we also see persecutions, uh, persecutions because of so many people becoming Christian. Right. We also saw the persecution stop. What caused the persecutions to stop? We had the Roman persecution. We had official persecution. What do I mean when I say official persecution? Mm -hmm. so you said, say that again. What do I mean when I say official persecution? That was persecution, but we had the first official persecution. What does that mean? Who was that? The disciples, the apostles. Who who began to persecute the church? Um, Saul. Saul. But but after Saul, Saul, not after Saul. Once we leave, leave the apostles, we're now with the church fathers. We are with the church fathers, those that walk with the disciples. Right. Right? So right. Paul is gone. All of them are gone. We have jumped, those that walk with John. John and some of John's disciples. They mm -hmm. become church fathers. Right. Clement. Yes. Polycarp. Yes. Yes. Right. So, Something mm. was already happening, and the Christians, well, but right about that time, we have an official persecution. Who was that that was really blaming the Christians for what happened? Remember, we talked about that. Was it, um, did you After, say Nero? Was it Nero? I'm sorry, Emperor Nero. Nero, oh, yeah, in the lecture, things that are happening, persecution is happening. But the main thing, we have apostasy creeping in. What is apostasy? Falling away. Apostasy is a falling away mm -hmm. or a turning away. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at the church we have, at Pentecost, we have 3,000, 5,000 just, just being saved and filled with the Spirit. And people are being converted. So much mm -hmm. so that they were complaining that where they had the temple, where their idols were, that the places were empty because people had turned from those idols, okay? So much so that, that they were Christians. But we began to have persecutions and we know that the official one came from uh, uh, Nero, the state one. <clears throat> people were already persecuting the church. Mm -hmm. And then, but it's just like right now, we don't have an official persecution. There's not someone from the government that is persecuting our our church or the church. When that happens, you know we're at the end. But apostasy, what caused apostasy or a turning away? With all these people getting saved and the church growing and everybody going into Africa, into Asia, into um, all into Europe with the word, what happened that people were turning away? Was it heresy? Was it doctrine? Because remember, I want you all to know those words. So when we come to those definitions, those words, to make sure you know the definition. So Pat, Dr. Butler, you asked what happened, right? Mm -hmm. that again? You said you asked the question, what happened as it relates to um, when people started, you know, apostasy, right? What caused it? And so I read that a turning away from God, it was a turning away from God, right? People began to turn away from, they no longer honored God. Right. They, they just, you know how everybody was just in, in love, just, oh, we're just in love of the Christians and so forth. But when stuff starts to creep in and you begin to hear uh, that Jesus was not divine, that's false preaching. That's, you know, you're like, what? You know, the falling away, the pandemic comes in and people just don't come back to church. 
Mm. They won't, they'll do everything else but come to church. You know what I'm saying? This is a far away. Mm. Where is everybody? We, we right. had just enough. The people that were there just didn't come back. I've right. heard the, the minister say that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at part two. I'm going to put it on the board. Please ask questions. Strengthening believers. I'm going to put it on the board, but let me just say a few words here. We're going to come up with the, the apostolic father. We also will look at some of the fathers that at the beginning of the Catholic Church, what we, what we call the Roman Church. But we'll also look at some things. We've got to look at them because we have to look at that church because that was there. Okay? It wasn't really Catholic. It was the Roman Church. But something okay. happened in that, that some of those that converted, after they converted, it became all right to be a Christian. Okay? Everybody mm -hmm. wanted to be a Christian. The whole thing is, and we'll see this if you study it, but when a lot of these heathen people, I'll say heathen, because they were to BOV, all of a sudden the emperor said, everybody's going to be a Christian. So it's all right to be a Christian. The persecution stopped. Everybody became a Christian. But some of those that worshiped in the temples of uh, what these little GOVs, they didn't put away some of those things. Y'all get what I'm saying? Some of the images. Right. Some of the things that we see got over into the church. Mm. This became a problem. And so we had an Orthodox church and we had a Roman church. And so there will we will find that there is going to be a great schism, a separation, and we'll get that's where we'll get the Catholic Church, and and that'll go in mostly be in that the European, uh, Roman uh, uh, area, and we'll get the Orthodox Church that'll be in the East, because the Orthodox Church says we don't bow down and kiss the bishop's ring or the bishop's toe. We don't bow down to uh, icons. And I say icons, some people say idol, because those things that were images of saints, we don't mm -hmm. bow down to that as Christians. So we will find out what the difference is of Christians and Catholics. We'll okay. speak briefly because I'm not here to bash Catholics. But, mm -hmm. uh, I know that God is not looking at denominations. He's looking at the heart. Doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't mean a thing to God. But the word of God, what, where you've been true to the word of God, to Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. So that's where we are. Again, let me just draw your attention to the, the schedule that we have. And I'm going to try and see if I can just put that up a little bit because I want you to see that. Uh, you have a copy of it. What we have done here is to endeavor to put something, I just put them where you can go to the link and read them. I want you to read them because that's where your exam questions will come from. Anything that I've given you, it may be on your exam. So when I ask you to read the summary of the book of Acts, uh, please do that so that you can, keep, you can be able to do your list. Read the book. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. All right. So, so that you all know that the midterm, if it can come from anywhere, somewhere, I told you to read this, we got read that, that maybe where some of the answers are. Okay. Amen. All right. And the midterms are take home. So that, that shouldn't be a problem. Right okay. <clears throat> we, 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 we already have went through week one. Uh, we, we tried to come in in the apostolic age. We tried to give the uh, year or the century uh, to kind of tell us what was happening. Not, not quite a timeline, but a timeline so that you could see some things that were happening. We talked about the beginning. We talked about the historical background. Uh, and that beginning was with Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Jesus had said to his uh, 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 apostles, that wait, he has said that, and I think in all four gospels, 
he had said that wait for the promise, wait for the thing. And that's where they were when the Holy Spirit, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is known as the birthday of the church. So we went all over this. We talked about the apostolic fathers. And we talked about uh, Paul was on some missions. Did we talk about Paul? Because not only Paul went on missions, taking the work, taking the word all over, but we saw the conversion of the Roman world. I just talked about that. The whole Roman world was converted to Christianity. But you've got these even, I, I say even, but I, I, all I mean is that they were idol worshippers. They were in the temples of Venus and Aphrodite and all of them. You know what I'm saying? But now they are Christians. And so we, we see that conversion. And, and because of that conversion, everybody's becoming a Christian. And I think the state didn't care too much for that. The Christians were accused of many things. One of the things they were accused of is being cannibalistic. And that is because they took the, the blood and the, the wine. The wine, you know, we take communion. And people were like, they're drinking blood. Or they're drinking that, 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 that uh, bread that they have. It was, it was just bread and wine. Okay? But so they were accused of many things. And that's why people are, are per persecuted. And then the Christians just didn't eat everything. They didn't take everything. They didn't bow down. And so everybody bowed down in the Roman world to the emperor. All of a sudden, you're not worshiping the emperor. So we see some of these things that are happening. Uh, persecutions began. We talked about this. Um, we talked all about that. Early Christianity, the historians began with the ministry of Jesus. That's where we began. Um, we're kind of in week two. The church in early development. And so uh, we talked about this a bit, I think, in lecture. And today we're going to go right there where it says strengthening believers. Now, my I, I have several copies of this book. Uh, the book. But the book does not always give a page number. So let me see if I can put the book up. Okay? Um, go to where it says Strengthening Believers. I'm going to stop here, see if I can put the book up. And hold on, Saint, because you know I'm, I'm one of those ones that. Uh, it's all right, take your time. <laughs> Learning stuff. You never know it. Okay. Right along with you. <laughs> Truly. Okay, give me a minute. Hopefully that'll come up. We'll see. All right, let me ask you this. If you can see it, say it now. No, ma'am. No. Cannot see it. Okay. Hold on. Let me see what else we can do. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. My help is okay. Here we go. Let me see if you can do it. Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Part three, part three. We're looking at part three. Okay, great. Good. Let me see if I can find what we need to find, and that is uh, strengthening believers, which uh, is part two. My book says page uh, about page ten. I know this this doesn't have page numbers, but it's page about page ten. So what does it look like? Hold on. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I'm having to scroll, Dr. Joy. No worries, you just take your time. Amen. Because I can't do it. You passed it. It's not working for some reason. There it is. You you okay. passed it. Nothing believers. Where are we? Growth. That's part one. Okay, here we go. Come on, wait, there you there go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Just come down a little bit. There you go. All right. My book because I've got the books. And so okay. mine has page numbers. This doesn't have page numbers for some reason. And so 
you talk about strengthening believers, the church in its early development. As I go along, highlight some things that you want to highlight because, like I said, those things uh, will help you later on for your midterm and your final. Um, I'm sure you've already read this is why we talked about it. As the apostles passed from the scene, others arose in the church to take their places. These leaders, generally elders or bishops, are called fathers. And fathers in God, because of the esteem in which they were held by the church members, or because of their historical relationship to later church development, because of their relationship to the apostles, that was sort of an honor given, or somehow they, this is what they used. And so the fathers are frequently divided into how many groups? Four. Four, four groups. Okay. And if it says that on the exam, maybe maybe because most of the exams are fill in the blank. If you're there, if you want to come out, you just fill in the blank so you read it. And the father, they're divided into four groups. And I may ask you, what are these groups? These are the, these are the groups. We have the uh, apostolic, or post-apostolic father, the apologist, the polemicist, and the scientific theologian. So all the author wants us to know is who these were. Now the author is going to try and break it down for us, okay, to tell us who uh, these were. So the apostolic fathers, what was their purpose? Exhort and edify the church. Yes. Sir. And so who were they? We have, uh, Clement? Uh, Appius. Go ahead. Shepherd of Hermes. Uh-huh. Barnabas, Ignatius, uh -huh. Didache, yeah. So we have Ignatius and the Didache. So it says writers are writing. What was the Didache? It was a, a y'all gonna look this up. You know what? I don't know what it is. I'm gonna go to the back of my book, go to the back of the book. There it is on the next look page. Up, go to the, 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 let's see find that word. The Didache teachers of the 12. Yeah, okay. So it's on page 12. Yeah. So it's on page 12. In the no, 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 no. Oh, it is? It's the teaching of the 12. Right. On page 12. Look okay. at the back of your book. Page 228 or at the index of the back of your book. Mm -hmm. So if I don't know where to find the Didache, or if I want to find Clement, I can look under C, C L E is Clement and Clement. There's Clement. Okay. Clement of Alexander. He's on pages 19, 20, and 38. Clement of Rome, nine, page nine. They're giving all of those. Okay. But which one do we want? We want the one that's the apostolic father. Hoppius. Not only are we get we know who they are, but you must know what they did. Mm -hmm. What right. did you do? So that's the book gives us a little introduction, but again, use the general index in the back of your book because you come across these and don't just, when I teach the Bible, I tell students, don't, don't go over those words. Let the Holy Spirit give to you. Go and do your research. Find out what it's talking about before you go. If you're going to read a passage of scripture, you ought to know it, it ought to be plain for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The apostolic fathers are characterized by edification as they sought to build up or do what? And believers in the faith. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Now that's the apostolic father. Y'all see that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sorry, I can't highlight, but I'm trying to do that. Okay. Then we have the what? Apologists. The apologists. By defense against attacks on Christianity. Uh huh. And who else? The polemicist. Uh huh. By attacks against heresy within the church and the scientific theologians, by a scientific study of theology in an effort to apply to theological investigation, philosophical modes of thought of thought then current oh, at that time. And so one of the things we have here is that 
some of these are are uh, trying to defend the church against heresy, false teaching within the church. There are going to be some that are going to uh, 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 fight for the church outside of the church. First one that we learn about is Clement. Mm -hmm. so we want to know who was Clement. I don't want you to get too deep in these, but because you are a Bible scholar, not only are you a Bible scholar, you are in the school of ministry. Mm -hmm. You are actually in a college. So this is different from that's just a, a, a Thursday night Bible study. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So as right. a college student or seminary student, Dr. Harden said, what's the, what's the difference between seminary and Bible college? Usually a seminary is denominational. Mm -hmm. So you would go to a Baptist seminary and that's what you get is denominational. A Bible college is non-denominational. And we are non-denominational, our Bible college. We don't mm -hmm. teach denominations. We teach right. okay. college, but we're not going to veer to one denomination or the other one. Okay? So Clement, and I'm just going to do a little bit because y'all going to do the reading. Clement, of Rome. This is the one we're talking about. Clement of Rome. And so it says, while the Apostle John was writing Revelation on the Isle of Patmos or at Ephesus, Clement served as what? Leading the elder or bishop in the church, in the church at Rome. The Roman church. In this capacity, he what? A, 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 a responsibility for answering an appeal. As did Paul. Paul a half a century earlier. Mm -hmm. See? So, just a little bit. Now, you're going to read Clement. When you read it, just scan and get the, the, the part that, that uh, what he did, okay? The next one, number two. Who was the next number two? The Shepherd of Hermas? Yes. No. Well, again, we're talking about the Apostolic Fathers. Their mm -hmm. job was to strengthen believers. Because the believers, if they're hearing so much heresy, so much false teachers, their job is to try to really uh, defend the books, defend the doctrine. Because who's keeping count of those books? I told you all the gospels were written in the first century. Right. They were already done with by the end of the first century. What mm. happens to these books? Mm. If someone, if they got lost, if, you know mm. who wrote the, who the author of the Bible is? He's the Holy Spirit. Yes, ma'am. Somehow God, in providentially or however he did it, caused these books to be defended. Someone caught these books up and captured these books so that nobody would change them. Yeah. Mm. How in the world did that happen? But it had to happen and they had to defend everything against false teaching. That's what they were trying to do. And so, about a half a century later, another Roman, Hermas, go to work known as the Shepherd of Hermas, actually, and I don't want to read too much because I don't want to waste, waste time, but I just want you to know what he did that was important. Right. Don't scan it. Okay, just scan, read it, and, and then get the, get the most out of it that you can get out of it. Okay. Um... Okay, so then we want to go to number, we want to go to Poly, who's the next one? Papias? Ignatius. Oh, Ignatius. Is it Ignatius? Bishop of Antioch. Now we have these bishops. We, have, we started out with just elders, elders and, and so forth like that. But now look, look what's happening. We're starting to get bishops. We're starting to get bishops. The next thing we're going to get is Pope. Okay. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, a Syrian father, of, uh, apostolic father, and the most famous of the group. Okay. Um, he, he, unity was to be accomplished, if you look down further in the paragraph, unity was to be accomplished on the one hand by rooting out heresy. Let me just go to that, because I'm reading my copy if, if you're not. Okay. And we're, we're talking about Ignatius. And it says here, and we can find it because I'm looking at my book. Uh, 
All right, well, let's, let's just look in here. Thus, Ignatius gave impetus to the power of bishops. Power of bishops, but only over local congregations. He did not elevate the position of the Bishop of Rome over that of other bishops. That did happen later on. Okay? But seems to have been the first to speak of a Catholic universal church. It is not clear, that's all the word Catholic means is universal church. It is not clear whether this his emphasis on the ruling bishop was a view held commonly in the church in his day or whether it was largely his own position. Polycarp, who was Polycarp of Smyrna? He was a disciple of the apostle John. Isn't that something? Y'all see that? Yeah. Ooh, somebody had to be left. Have you ever wondered mm -hmm. that when the end, of, when you see the end of the book of Acts, what mm -hmm. happened after that? Hmm. He wrote several <laughs> pieces of the letter to Philippines. Stop there, it continues. Someone carried on the work. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. How do you figure that? Do you get that? And we have Dr. Betty Harden who has joined us. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dr. Harden. Hey. Hello, Hello, Betty. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We are, to all. We, are yep. we welcome you. We welcome you. You're welcome. Thank you. And so we look here, we're talking about the, the uh, Apostolic Fathers those ones that came after the disciples, those ones that walked with the disciples, they had walked with the disciples. These are the ones now that are defending the faith, threatening believers because of so much persecution, so much heresy, so much false teaching and false doctrine. And we come to Papias. So one of the things again, that I want you to just familiarize yourself with because you are Bible scholars. Not only that, we said we are in a college. We are in a college, a Bible college. So we want to know a little bit about Papias so that we can be intelligent sounding when we talk. As Dr. Mm -hmm. Oates would say, so that we might give every man an answer for what we believe. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. What about this next one? Papias? Papias, Bishop of. We did Papias. What about Papias? He, well, you know, actually, I did read this and I did a little, little deep diving. Okay. And Papias is the hearer of John and companion of Polycarp. Uh huh. Papias is Greek. Uh huh. And he's the Bishop of. This is exactly what it says in this part. But the uh -huh. first part I read, I actually went and I did a little diving. Uh -huh. So Papias, Bishop of Heropolis in Phygia, wrote about, a, wrote, wrote about 125, his interpretations of the sayings, the oracles of the Lord is now lost. Uh -huh. The parts of it survive in the writings of Arrhenius and Eusebius. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. What about the next one? Barnabas. 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 Uh -huh. Barnabas. Uh -huh. Originated in North Africa. Uh huh. Uh huh. You'll see that. Remember what we said the last time? When the gospel spread, it didn't just spread into Europe or Asia right. Minor. It went where? Into All Africa. Over. All over the world. All over the world. It went into Africa. How do we think that it went into Africa the first time? Mm. Who do we think took it? We saw that in Acts what? Acts 8? Yeah. Who was that? The Ethiopian unit. He took yeah. the gospel. He went back into his to Africa. We know that we had some of these that, that were from Alexandria. That's in Egypt. That's Africa, folks. And what did we say? What uh, Christianity was very strong in Africa. What happened? What happened? We talked about this. 
That was so powerful. What happened? Remember we talked about it? Islam? You sure? Islam just completely yes. is so strong. Right. So Christianity is still strong in Africa, but especially in Ethiopia. What did we say was in Ethiopia? We talked about it the last time. What do we say is there that they claim is there? The ark. Remember we talked about that? The ark. Okay. So know that it went into Africa. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna ask you who the African fathers were, because we have some African fathers. What were the Dadashe? Somebody already said it. The Dache um teachings of the twelve. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, the Dache treats Christian ethics. Liturgical matters okay. like baptism okay. and fasting, okay. the Eucharist, uh -huh. the ministry and church government, okay, and the speech okay. of the second coming and the end of the world. Yes. It also okay. speaks to baptism being performed by immersion, if possible. But if not, it says by threefold effusion. Uh -huh. And effusion means, I looked it up, uh -huh. the act of pouring liquid. So you, you see people being baptized just by, like in the Catholic church, by uh -huh. you know, liquid being poured over. That uh -huh. is effusion. Uh -huh. But Diachi teaches that we should do uh, perform baptism by immersion. Uh -huh. That would be the first choice. Okay. If possible. If possible, yes. And that believers should live a life of preparedness in view of the return of Christ. And when I read that sentence, I, I, I you know, that just it, it hit home, uh -huh. you know, because that's exactly what we need to be doing. That's it. That's it. And so we have all these defenders of the faith, those that are strengthening the believers. Amen. And Amen. so we have the apostolic fathers, but we evaluate them in accordance with their um, their apparent purpose, with their purpose, okay, uh, to exhort and edify the church. Because we already said, the book told us that that was their purpose, to strengthen the believers. So here it says... Um, Sometimes they are criticized by evangelicals because they do not seem to grasp the New Testament concept of salvation by faith. Keep in mind, we had several uh, ecumenical councils, and we and that's in your timeline. When you look at your timeline, you will see the first ecumenical council. It was really defending because some were saying Jesus is not divine; he's just a highly created being. We they had many councils took place. We saw that in the book of Acts, the first ecumenical council. And then from there we saw other ecumenical councils where the faith was being defended or either it was being attacked. Mm -hmm. Because some were saying we were gonna do it this way, or I think we should go this way, when we already have the teaching of the twelve, we already have the teaching of, of, of the uh apostles. So why you want to leave the apostles uh, of doctrine? Why you want to learn, learn the early doctrine? Because man has a way of changing things. So make sure you read that, read up on that, so that you have it for your um, your 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 exam. The apologists, the apologists. Mm -hmm. What do we know about the apologists? We come down to the defense of the faith. They were educated Christians. They were attorneys. Say that again. Educated Christians, attorneys. Uh -huh. <laughs> they, their job was to do what? Win legal um, recognition for Christianity and to defend it against various charges leveled by a pagan populace. And that pagan populace, we said, became Christians. So much so that the pagan temples were empty, but they nevertheless had to defend it because 
as the pagans or those who worship the little G-O-D, they're bringing things over into the church that should not have come over into the church. They're bringing the teachings, they're bringing their icons, they're bringing all these things over into the church. So the church is having to, the true church, I'll say like that, is having to defend itself. So the approach and purpose of the apologist was entirely different from that of the apostolic fathers. They had to win battles legally. Okay. The, who, who were the apostles? We know their purpose. Who were they? Justin Marchier, uh -huh. Tatian, uh -huh. and Tertullian. And Tertullian. What do we know about them? Again, we said we don't we don't need to know a whole lot. He comes up for the purposes of examination. We really need to get an oh. understanding. So what do we know? What did you read? Justin Martyr is a literary defender. And I, I read this, you guys. That's why I'm sharing my little notes. So <laughs> Justin Martyr, he is a literary defender of the faith. Mm -hmm. And the most dramatic and therefore best known of the apologists uh -huh. was Justin Martyr. Uh -huh. And it says, certainly he was a great literary defender of the faith. I underline that. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Wow, wow. I I think that you know um, the Lord had a way. We know that the Holy Spirit is the author of the scriptures. But can you imagine that that the scriptures have to so close? I mean, it's only like what the second century or so. Maybe mm -hmm. about the you know, and already you're having to defend it. Oh. But we said it was already attacked even before the apostles went off the scene, the church was already being attacked. What else? What else do we see? Anyone else about Justin Martyr? Anyone else? Tatian, what about him? One of Justin's what? Converts. Converts in Rome. Uh-huh, uh-huh. His address to the Greek was largely a tirade against paganism. Yeah, I hope y'all get that so that when that's on your exam, mm -hmm. you'll see what, what was it about Tapia. Like you can't put everything down, but some of the things you can fill in the blank. Right. Right. What you, happened okay. after uh, yeah. Justin's martyr? What happened to Tapia? He went to Syria uh -huh. and he founded a group later called the Incratites. Uh -huh. good, good, good pronunciation, mm -hmm. I think. Known for their extreme ascetic practice. Uh-huh. Wow. And probably best known for his, we won't even try to pronounce is that? it, but the Diatessoran. Diatessoran. Uh-huh. Okay. Diatessoran. <laughs> he's... I love it. The earliest harmony of the gospel. There you go. So if you see that, what is it really known for? I think I would pull that out, the earliest harmony of the gospel. Because we said after Acts, because it just a continued, no, we know that uh, the Holy Spirit really was uh, providentially in all of this, where this book was, these books were going back and forth. The, the word of God had already been uh, uh, done by the first century, the end of the first century, all the books had been written. But wow. who's mm -hmm. going to be part over that? Who's going to take care of them? That they don't get, and then we said there are other books, remember? Yes. Right. Okay. But somewhere in a, when we get down to it, we're going to come to a part where they have to defend these books. They're actually going to have to have another ecumenical council and to, the, to really get together the canon as we know it right now. Yeah, the, canon, the books that are included in the Bible, we will see that. That's a chapter in our book that they're going to have to. This is it's like, my goodness, you tell me, Tertullian. What about it? You know what? Uh, what really struck me about Tertullian? Uh -huh. What struck me about Tertullian is that I've heard the word Carthage 
in movies. Mm. So like what I what Thank I you just from. right? Carthage, North Africa. Tartullius, Carthage, North Africa. He was a lawyer. He became a lawyer. He wrote a long list of apologetic and theological works in Latin and in Greek. But it really, it, it, this reminds me of the movies we watch. You know, um, they talk about Bible. They really are speaking about the things in the Bible. Uh -huh. Those Roman movies. Mm. Wow. I've heard that Carthage in several movies. Wow. <laughs> that was interesting to me. Wow. Yeah. One of the things that I can tell you about North Africa and Oriental Africa is they had some of the best museums of that day. They had some of the best libraries of that day. That's Africa. Wow. Some of the most learned men of that day. So we see that in the Bible, it said he was from Alexandria. We think Greek, but that's Alexandria, Egypt, in mm -hmm. Africa. Okay? Wow. Now we talk about the apologists. Let's talk about, we talk about that, what, what was that? The apologists. Let's now go and talk about, well, let's see. Polymicists. <laughs> Attacks against era. What what's going on? The polemics. Huh? Now I know y'all been reading because I've said to you that <laughs> a book read <laughs> it is significant that in refuting era, the polemics appealed extensively to New Testament books as the source of true doctrine. There you go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This gave later impetus to the later official pronouncement on the contents of the New Testament canon. There it is. So we, we're going to see that. We're going to see how they really defend this council, and we're going to see uh, the different uh, things that cause apostasy or a turning away or a falling away. We're going to see that because there's so much false doctrine creeping in to the church. The polemicists, what was the purpose again of the polemicists? To attack error. And who were the leaders? Uh, Iranians, uh, Hippolytus, uh, Tertullian, Cyprian. Uh, uh, yeah. Arabius, and Tertullian, and Cyprian. So, kind of know who the apologists were, who the uh, what the purpose were. Although most of the apologists lived in the East, most of the polemicists lived in the West. Earliest of the group was Irenaeus, who wrote against heresy. That's uh, uh, like a book or something that he wrote or a paper. And Lyons, France, where he was bishop, primarily aimed at philosophical era of Gnosticism. Where do we see that word Gnosticism at? In the Bible. We saw that when the Gnostics came in. So mm -hmm. this was already one of the early heresies. One Practical. of the earliest of. Amen? It's a cult. A cult, yes. Remember what we said? Mm -hmm. You know, if I wanted to know, I come to that a Gnostic and I want to know what the Gnostics is, I have only but to go to the, the back of my book, look at the index, and I look under G, and I can find the Gnostics, okay? <laughs> find the Gnostics, Gnosticism, pages 31 and 32, because the author is just giving us a little bit about an introduction of who these people were, these defenders and these, uh, the ones that uh, really were defending the faith, the ones that were defending the false doctrine, the attacks on the church, and we can find out more about them. And this one, Hippolytus, covering much of the same ground as Irenaeus, okay, attack Gnosticism. Somebody had to put it down. Mm. We have, do we have anything like that going on today? Do we have false doctrine and cults that are creeping into the church? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah. 
unless you are learned and have like 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 we have these men knowledgeable enough of god's word knowledgeable enough of what it should be what it was the teaching then you don't have you you can't do much to defend it right that's why it's important that we read the bible know the word of god so that we can defend it how much how can we defend it we don't even know error okay yeah, so he also but there's another part here you see that word monarchism yes that's one of the words one of the ones that you should be familiar with we're going to deal with that later on okay i'm okay. sorry what's the word my apologies question what's the word my apologies okay let me highlight if i can right here the oh okay well not okay that's just one narcissism is the other one okay and then we, we look at Tertullian again uh two other western polemicists Tertullian and cyprian uh maybe classified with the apologists so the, the author is trying to introduce us here cyprian modern in 258 many of these men lost their life they were modern you know for, for their belief they were uh persecuted many of the christians were persecuted we saw at one point we said the persecution stopped why did the persecution stop because everybody became a christian well why did everybody become a christian who was converted who was converted uh, what emperor um okay we, we talked about it what emperor he said, if I win this battle, if I win this battle, I'm going to become a Christian. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to get to it. I'm going to let y'all <laughs> taste that one a little bit. Because we talked about it. And because of that, there was, there was, he converted and all the persecution stopped. But you know 15. what? We were really, 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 what was his name? Constantine. What? Constantine. His name starts with a C. Constantine. There you go. Oh, okay. All righty. All right. Keep that up. That'll be on the test. That'll be on the exam. <laughs> That'll be on the exam. Scientific theologians. What was their purpose? Let's see. Um. Scientific. They saw church from heathenism. I, you can go ahead, woman of God. No, no, sweetie, go. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Come on. Um, to to convert win converts from heathenism. Um, to provide new converts with simple instruction for living the Christian life. Um, to show the superiority of Christianity to pagan philosophy and to provide commentaries on various scriptural passages, uh -huh. partly in answer to heretical interpretations. Heretical, yes, yes. In the writings of Clement, the influence of Greek philosophy is prominent, especially that of Plato, uh -huh. but the Bible also has a place of importance. Uh -huh. Clement contributed to the development of purgatory and Christian mysticism. I underline that. Now, the scientific theologians, their purpose was to develop scientific methods of biblical interpretation. We would call them today, they were the first to do systematic theology. Wow. That's what we would, we would call them today because they put everything systematically. They took the Bible and then they had to be able to systematically put it in some kind of order. You know, it, it may be a good thing that they did that. I don't know because people would never have, uh, uh, people didn't read in those days, didn't read or write in, in those early days, but somehow God raised up learned men, some that would not turn from the teaching, but to develop scientific methods. And a lot of people, when, when I've taught um, different class, uh, different courses, the theologians, some theologians do not want to mix with science, scientists. 
They don't want anything scientific, nor do they want anything psychological or philosophical. But these are the ones that said, we want to put the scientific method of biblical interpretation. All that means is we're going to take it, we're going to put it in a microscope, and we're going to look at it. And we'll put it in its place. We'll put this over here and that over there. It doesn't mean that they necessarily wanted to change it. It's just that they wanted to examine it. That's the scientific method. When you're, you're going to examine something, you're going to research it. And we do that when we come to thesis and dissertation. We use the scientific methods for mm -hmm. research and all the things that we have to do. And that's what they're going to do with it. And we know who they were. These are theologians. Alexandrian uh, was in the western part. Uh, then we have Pantagius, uh, Jerome, Clement, Ambrose, Origen, Augustine, and Athanasius. It's a church in my neighborhood, uh, St. Athanasius. Athanasius, yep. Mm -hmm. As y'all know where St. Athanasius is? Yep. Um, yep. Long Beach. In North Long Beach, behind the uh, yep. Taco Bell right there. Mm -hmm. Off of Atlantic. Right, right. So we have some Alexandrian theologians. Um, earliest of the leaders of the school, Clement, in Alexandria for, convert, for converts from paganism and children of believers was Pantheneus who helped arrange the authority until about 190. And we we tried to give those periods. I think I gave you some, uh, I don't know if I gave you handouts or anything like that, but yeah, we did put it in the schedule. We put it in the schedule so you can kind of know when they, these things were taking place. So you can kind of have a timeline. But one other thing about Clement, one other thing about Clement, what did he do that I might put on the exam? Oh, here. oh, what's this paragraph down here? He contributed to the development of purgatory and Christian mysticism. You see what I'm saying? So we have to, we have to know this. Okay. Again, why do I want to know all this history? It, but many of us, and the last time I talked to you, I put it in the lecture, that we really need to know our own church history. If yeah. you're if you're uh, Pentecostal, you need to know that history. Yeah. If you're Baptist, you need to know that history. Or if you're Presbyterian, you need to know that history. How did that church develop? Who developed that church? You know what I mean? Is it you need to know the doctrine? You need to know the mission. You know, uh, what does it believe? What's the statement of faith and all of that? We're studying ancient history ancient uh, church history, which is our history, it's like our family tree. Mm -hmm. You need, it's, it's the Christian, it's the church history family tree. All of this is on our family tree. Some of it is not good. On my family tree, I know I have some, some cattle rustlers. <laughs> okay? Some bad people over there on, on, on west side or on that side. So it's still the family tree. All these people are on the family tree as to the development of the early church or early Christianity. And so for some reason we see all this, we're like, I don't want them on my family tree, but nonetheless, here he is, he did some good things, but he's instrumental in purgatory and Christian mysticism. In fact, he was one of the inventors of purgatory with his primary goal of eventual purification of the soul. Where did all this stuff come from that we have today? It goes back to ancient, ancient times, okay? Origen, and I'm, and I'm moving for sake of time. We, we talked a little bit about Origen, but it said most famous of the Alexandrian writers was Origen. What was, where was Alexandria now? Where was that at located? When I think of Alexander, I think of Greece. Mm -hmm. I think of Greece. But you know what Alexandrian what, what writers were? In Egypt. Africa. Alexandria, yeah. Egypt. Africa. Wow. Okay? So, Origen is often called the first theologian. We have theologians today. 
As a matter of fact, you are a theologian. You know what theologians do? They study the word of God. They study the things of God. Anyone that gets into the word of God and study it and 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 really writes and and digs into it, as we see Sister Jackson doing, Prophetess Jackson, just have been digging into it, and Sister Cheryl digging into it, and now we got Sister Lloyd joining us. Amen. Digging mm -hmm. into you're a theologian. You're one that studies the things of God, doctrine, and so forth. I'm moving because y'all gonna read all those things. Just want you to know that you have to have Athanasius. Here's Athanasius. He'll be on other pages in our book. Many decades later, the great uh, Athanasius rose to a position of leadership in Alexandria. To him goes special credit for the triumph of the Orthodox view of Christ over Arianism. Remember, I started the lecture by saying that we have the Roman Church and we have the Orthodox Church. Yeah. Okay. Now, here we have, what does it say here? To, um, to him goes special credit for the triumph of the orthodox view of Christ. Orthodox meaning unchanging. Whatever was written in the word, that's it. It's orthodox. It does not change. So you know how you have an orthodox Jew? That orthodox Jew is going to do everything, all the, uh, what do you call it, the feast of the Passover and all of the, that orthodox. He's going to celebrate that. That one that's not real orthodox, they did yesterday. Why? Exactly. Some of us are orthodox in our religion. You know, we stick strictly to our our uh, creed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not so orthodox. But to him goes special credit for that. So you should know that a little bit about it. Um, Arianism. Please know that. That's another term. Arianism that you need to know. I will always ask you who slapped who. Dr. Joyce, go ahead. Uh, just letting you know it's 914. Right. Dr. Joyce is our timekeeper. She, she uh, holds up my arms. Thank you. Arianism. You need to know about Arianism. Who was he? Remember, a lot of this stuff got started because of man. Mm. Who was he? And even when we get to find out, even the Catholic Church denied him. Somebody slapped him at one of the councils, one of the ecumenical councils. He was slapped by somebody. Y'all going to tell me who that is. I have you already read it. And this is who? Arianism? Arianism. His name is Arius. Arianism. Arianism. You got to highlight it right there. Right. Okay. A thinly disguised paganism. Paganism. Okay. He just couldn't see Jesus as divine. Somebody slapped him at one of these ecumenical councils. I want you to kind of know who that is. All right, Cyril. St. Nicholas. Who was it? It was St. Nicholas who slapped the heretic Arius. <laughs> y'all, y'all, little things like that, y'all, y'all, you know, because somebody got to defend it. And even, the, even he had a lot of followers. Yeah, he had a lot of followers, but it was all because, and I'm going to let you re read that for yourself, what, about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He just felt that he was just another, he was, he was, he was created, we're created, but he said he was a highly created being. No. That he, that he was, wasn't divine, you know what I mean? Come on now, Christ slapped him, he did slap him. Jerome. Uh, the Western theologian, Jerome. So know a little bit about him. Um, he began his influential writing ministry by means of extensive correspondence and dramatic telling of the lives of early ascetics. He did much to promise asceticism, celibacy, and monasticism. So we're going to look at all of those things um, because it crept over into the church. It crept over into the Roman church. One of those is celibacy, where the priests don't marry. Okay? So y'all look those words up and look, go to the index and try to find them. If not, you might have to Google them so you can find them. The celibacy. 
and hopefully we can get to that tonight. Dr. Joyce already got me on time. Ambrose, um, another of the most illustrious fathers of the Western Church, his writings represent an official witness to the teachings of the Roman Church in his own time in the earliest century. How did these things, writings uh, survive? Thank God, oh my God, for the Holy Ghost, amen? All right, I'm moving, I'm moving, because you guys are going to read all that. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo in North Africa, stands pre preeminent among theologians of all time. His influence upon all Christian faith has been significant. His emphasis on a personal experience of the grace of God as the necessary to salvation has caused Protestants to accept him as a forerunner of the Reformation. Because we know the Reformation is coming. I, we talked about that. I gave you a brief overall introduction. That's called reformer. We already know before Martin Luther uh, was known for the Reformation, there were already those who said, we have to reform the, the church. We cannot mm -hmm. follow the Roman church. No, nope. You've got to follow the true teaching. And so that was some of the defenders, some of the um, uh, uh, church fathers. And we said they were called father because that was an honor. Because uh, I've always been taught we don't call any man father. He, he's just that was my teacher. We don't call it father. But in this instance, we're trying to say that the reason they were because they were so highly held and esteem because they had walked with the apostles. Many of them were the disciples of the apostles, you know, like Charlie Park, John's disciple. So that's why the, the Christianity held them in high esteem, and they were given that title as father. Well. But then we, we see it, and sometimes now we see it where it gets over into the church. And um, But I want you to look at that. Uh, look at the theologians of Asia Minor and Syria, the three Cappadocians. Look at that. How many How many Cappadocians? Three. Three. So make sure you know the three uh, of them. Okay. And so that we can, uh, in case that's on the test. Uh, we talked about uh, persecutions, attacks from without. We also talked about attacks from within. What's the difference for, with a tax from without and a tax from within? What's the difference? What does it mean to have a tax within? A tax within, that means only within the church, there are those who are bringing in heresies and questioning and attacking the church within. Now, we have a tax from without. But you know, that's where the church, where you destroy a thing, is within. It's in the cap. Sin is in the cap. It's within. Okay? Reasons for persecution. And I'm just moving because y'all going to go back and study. We have persecutions. We're going to have some official uh, persecutions. And y'all should know the difference. Um, reasons for persecution. Jewish leaders. Uh, because the Jews were, were kind of worried, worried about losing their privileged position. Remember, the Jews have always been ones that had problems with Rome and those, uh, Caesar and all the rest of them, and the Jews kind of want to hold their position. Whereas we get the political, the political is like, wait a minute, the Christians are taking over. Wait a minute, we've got so many of them, you know what I mean? I'm just putting it short, but it gets political. So... Moreover, there was a union of religion and state in ancient Rome. So refusal to worship the goddess of Rome or the divine emperor constituted treason. This is why Rome fell. Rome, Rome, finally, Rome finally fell because it's like it, everything kind of got in hand with everybody being a Christian. And Christians was like, we're not bowing down. We're not, we're not going to do this. You know, it's like, wait a minute. You know, but that's another story. Social reasons. So if I ask you what what were the attacks from within, what were the reasons you would say Jewish fears, political, Roman political suspicion, social reasons, economic reasons, that kind of goes in today. We got some political stuff going on in the church today. This separates us. This is persecution. 
Just come in and divide us. One says, I'm following this one, and I'm voting for that one, and next thing you know, the, the evangelicals over there, and we're over here. And then we begin to get persecutions and all kind of things from within the church. These are, these are believers we're talking about in politics. Believe, we're all believers. What, economic reasons? Religious reasons? Some say, you know, um, what do you say? Religiosity, Christianity, stuff, because it was exclusive, as, as, you know, exclusive, not tolerant like other faiths of the empire. It, it was exclusive. You, either, you, you, had to, you had to come in here and, and be a follower of Jesus Christ. You couldn't have one leg in one thing and another leg in another. So it was exclusive, you know, in that sense. And um, plus, their love, love for each other was evidence. Uh, some thought of licentiousness because they said we love you brother and sister. Because they said brother, they thought it was incest. I'm just telling you some of the some of the persecution. Brother, we call each other brothers and sisters, but when they did it, they were saying oh, it must be incest. They, they're exactly loving on their brothers and sisters. But you know, that was all kind of false doctrine. Mm -hmm. uh, Roman imperial persecution, make sure you look at that. Um, we look at the Roman, and then we look at the imperial, because so those are official persecutions. Uh, Marcus Aurelius, kind of look and, and, and see this one. Um, just a little bit about him, know a little bit about him. And then Tolerant Stoic, he had no sympathy with the concept of immortality. Just didn't understand that. Hand up. Go ahead. You know what? <laughs> With Marcus Aurelius, like with that blaming thing, right? It was like it floored me. It reads that during his reign, the practice of blaming the occurrence of earthquakes, famines, floods, and pestilence on Christians began. Supposedly, these calamities befell the populace because they forsook the old gods and tolerated Christianity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they directed, he directed his attacks primarily, well, no, that's enough. But that part right there, that's like, wow. But, but, but look, at, look at the next line there, read the next line, persecution, what? Persecution under Marcus Aurelius was cruel and barbarian. Thousands mm -hmm were beheaded, are thrown to wild beasts, including the faith. Oh my goodness, Justin Martyr. Uh huh. So he, he was really something else. Wow. Amen. Per talk about persecution. Then we get persecution across the empire. <clears throat> In the middle of the third century, the situation changed, however. Rome celebrated the thousandth anniversary of her founding and looked back to the days of prosperity, stability, an unquestioned authority in the Mediterranean world. How the gods had once favored her. Now the foundations of the economical, political, and social structure were what? Crumbling. I tell you, Rome is falling, falling. But where do we see that, Bible scholar? Y'all remember that, that statue? You remember that statue with the feet of clay? Was it in Daniel? Where's my Bible scholars at? We uh -huh. all saw this. I was in the Old Testament that Rome mm -hmm. was going to fall. Right. Y'all look that up where we saw this, this the, the king had a dream and he saw this big statue and we mm -hmm. saw the feet of it. Oh, yes. That, that was okay. All of this. That's why we know the Bible is true because you can look over into it and see that things being fulfilled, our things talk, talking about. Oh, yes, you're right. I got it. All right. Okay, I'm moving <laughs> on. Toleration under Constantine. This is where I want y'all to read. Who was Constantine? Toleration. Okay, Constantine. We need to, to, to find out some of these things that were happening. What happened here? I won't go all into it because this is all talking about our persecution, but let me just talk about the early heresy. And I'm going to quickly go over it because I'm just going to give you the term. Abionism. 
or early her heresy in the second century. What was Abianism? I'm not going to talk about it. Gnosticism, we already talked about that. Know it. Know that. Um, what was the other one? There it is, Montanism. Okay, that'll be on the test. In the third century, because we had the first century, well, well y'all know what happened with the, the early heresy. Then we get into the second century. We already know what the early heresies were, you know, because we got it way back up there with talking to us about that. Now we're in the second century. We get Abianism, Gnosticism. Uh, we get, um, these are false teachings, okay? We get Montanism. What else? Then in the third century, we get Novatianism, okay? Mon monarchism. Uh, the monarchs, the monarchs, like being the queen or the king, a mm -hmm. monarch being worshipped, monarch. You just see that word monarch there? Monarchism. Okay, so go look at that. Manchism or cheesism, cheesyism, cheesyism. Y'all, y'all got that one. Uh, evaluation and a caution. Okay, the effects of the perversions in the early church were both negative and positive. They introduce erroneous views and practices into the regular churches and hinder their growth and development. But they also force church leaders to formulate more clearly the doctrine. Mm -hmm. That's why these economical councils came together. That's why these men of God got together to say, look, we need to come together and really figure out, is it gonna be this? Or are we gonna say the, the Trini Trinity? Is it going to some have said, no, no, we don't believe it's the Trinity. We shouldn't have the Trinity. Da, 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 da. But what does the Bible say? What does the word of God say? And that's why you have it to defend it. Okay? So evaluation and caution. Formation of the canon. We come to eight. Books for a New Testament. Formation of the canon. I would love for you to read this. Okay? We talk about it when we talk about our doctrine. We just finished our doctrine. Uh, didn't we, Dr. Joyce? Um, yes. Uh, we finished uh, doctrine. I can't even see. We finished doctrine. But one of the things we talked about was the Okay. Some think that books to be included in the New Testament canon were decided on hastily by a group of early church leaders late on a hot summer afternoon. And at some time, it art implied that the choice of those men was no better than a comparable group of church officials would make in the 20th century. The facts of history demonstrate, however, that the New Testament was not formed hastily, nor was it formed by the council. It was a product of centuries of development. The need for a canon. Remember all the swelling that's going on and one has the books over here, and one has the books over there. Somebody said, you know what, we better we better get together and know in a hurry so that we can get all these books together. Because some, some people are reading these books, some people said these are inspired books. Some said this is the inspired book. The Roman church wanted to be in charge. So there was a need for a canon to say, wait, once and for all, this is the book. Once and for all, this is it. Nothing else is added. We're going to stick to what was the teaching, what was written already. Okay? So I want you to know what was the need, the need for a canon? Why was that that we would need a canon? Which means uh, uh, the whole books, the list of books that, that are, are really the books of Christianity. Even Islam has a canon. It's just mm -hmm. reading the books that belong to that religion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a Christian had to have a canon that says, well, we got the Old Testament, we got the New Testament, we're sticking to that. Okay? So yeah, this is, that. You have so many other books, the Maccabees, the Apocryphas, and so forth. That's right. How in the world did that get in there, the Maccabees? Yeah. Okay? Test of canonicity. To this time, the test of the word of God has stood. From the time it was written, inspired by the Holy Ghost, 
classical canonists, when certain books became accepted as canonical, or, mm -hmm. or in the in the early list of the canon. So make sure y'all study the canon. I think we'll close with this. Um, uh, let, let me see how much time we have. Yeah, because we it's gonna, nine thirty-two. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try to close it up. So would you read? Make sure you get Dr. Joyce's phone number, her email. Uh, I'll try to put it in the next correspondence that I have with you so that you'll have that. So if you need to talk to her, you can't get me. Um, like I said, in the morning, I'm in I'm in the swimming pool somewhere, uh, well up there on the corner. And so, you know, I just kind of have that little time. And so y'all might be looking for me. And Dr. Joyce is at work. But you can always get us in the evening somewhere like that. Okay, we'll get back. If you you need me, just call or you can text me or email me. I will get back to you as soon as I can. All right. so Thank you. Nine, the early creeds. I've enjoyed you all this evening. The controversies concerning the faith of Christ. It, like I said, would you believe that if that that Jesus Christ, he had just been crucified in the first century. Mm -hmm. And not not even as he's walking, even as he's being crucified, even as some people are, the, the, the the attacks are coming, the heresies are coming, the false teachers are coming. Yep. Thank God we have the fathers who walk with the apostles because they wanted to hold on to the teachings of the apostles. But after them, what? And after them, what? Mm -hmm. And we're going to come all the way down where we're going to come into the medieval area, the medieval part of a, a, a history, into the Reformation. We're going to see some of that 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 got into the church, the Roman church, and and the reformers are saying we can't have this. We just don't agree with. It. And because they didn't agree, they were excommunicated and they put out of the church. That's all it means. Yeah, and and that's how other religions got started. Lutheranism. That's how other Calvinism. Got what was it? Yeah, I said yeah, Lutheranism, Calvinism, Protestant, yeah, all know. of the other yeah, all these yeah. other religions coming yeah. around. Yeah, and coming on down in our day, mm -hmm. some of that, some of those religions. We we now have uh, well, we always have the Baptist. Um, we have uh, uh but look at the baptist you got baptist you got first baptist second baptist southern baptist and they're not the same yeah they're not the same now where we're going to study we're going to do some black history i want you all to see the black church we won't be able to get all into it but we're going to see the black church also this is our history this is our family tree but when historians write Unless you know that some of these fathers were in Africa, and unless you know that they were highly educated, because if you, if you don't read your history, you don't know. Okay? And, and, and so then we, we know that even today, if we don't read our Black history, we never know what we had. Because we're always told that we were nothing. We didn't have nothing. We didn't come from anything. But yes, we did. Mm. Even some of the people that came over in slavery, they were Christians. And they and, and they thought we were barbarians. And I said, how did they become Christians over there in Africa? Coming out of that West Africa region? Because the Portuguese had already yeah. been in that area. And the Portuguese went in there and converted a lot of the Africans. Because the Africans had their own religion. They had their own little COVDs and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Still do, some of them. So we know that. So so nobody didn't think to say, wait a minute, there's some Christians on this boat. Like we are. The slave slavers, I guess they thought they were Christians. You know. All right, I'm done. So doc, Dr. Butler, we, we were gonna learn about these things in this book. Yeah. Yes, let me let me let me show you the um the, the last thing I can show you here. Let me see if I can let pull it up. Hold on a minute, stop here. Schedule. 
Let me find the schedule. Hold on. There we go. Remember I told you that this is your schedule? Yes. It kind of tells you yes. what you are in the I put in some of the some of those things, like abionism, Gnosticism, da 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 These are some of the things that I'm telling you to look at, right? Okay. Monarch, monarch, meaning a monarchy. Uh, all of these, that's it's, it's already in your schedule. This actually is part of your syllabus, but it's a schedule. I wanted to make it where we know week one, we know the period that we're in, we know what chapter we're studying, and so forth. Okay. Week two, we kind of know early development, century of the church fathers, the age of Christian Roman Empire, attacks without, didn't we talk about that tonight? Yes. Did we talked about that, third century. Got to try to put it in perspective for you so that you can say, oh, that was the third century. The great persecution. Oh, the monasteries begin as a church. Monasteries because the church, the Roman church, so somebody said, we're just going to go into a monastery. We're just going to get away from it all. And so the monks, the monks went into the monastery. That's how the monasteries got started. Mm -hmm. You know, so typically say, we're just going to follow Christ. We're, we're in these monasteries. And that's what they did. They gave up their life to be in a monastery as monks. So we come on down, attacks from within, early heritage. This is where I'm telling y'all to read. This is where we kind of finish. Okay? We kind of finished with Roman Emperor Constantine, right? Great. All right, converse to Christianity. Uh, here's the first, here's the part where we're going to do uh, next time, okay? Arianism. We kind of talked a little bit about it, uh, the papacy, which is the popes. Um, but coming on down, and I'm just going to get to this so we can close because I'm tired. I know you are. <laughs> What's going to do? Oh, this is here. We come on down and midterm, after midterm, we get a little bit of the church in America. We're going to do our best with that. But I'm trying to get to church in the contemporary world. We'll do something with that. But here is where we get our black church. Mm. Eight. That's where you're going to need that book. The black church history. And we'll, we'll do it from that book, that little red book that you have. We'll do a lecture. I do have handouts, but I also uh, have links so that you can go to some of these links and get an understanding of our background. And then we'll look at some of the very historic churches. In, and then if you ever wanted to visit some of the churches, the historic churches in, in our area, let me know and I'll give you credit for that. You know, I'll give you credit for that. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we just had one historic church burned down. That was big. Yeah, Baptist. Victory right. Baptist. That I was gonna um I was gonna look I was going to visit today. I was going to visit Second Baptist Church, but they're under construction right now. Oh, okay. I, I spoke with the secretary Linda. Uh -huh. And she had, I went to the website. She said I can go to the, um, she gave me the website and I did some research on the website and they gave me a lot of stuff that I never knew about it. Mm -hmm. My mom told me she'd been there a few times, but I never knew about the church. Uh -huh. But it, it was really interesting to learn some of the stuff They're, I love. It so proud. Oh, it makes you so proud when you visit some of these historic black churches. There's a lot of them in the south, so to speak, back that way. But we also have one AME. Right. I looked up that one too. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we right. we will look at all of them. I think they're in Fortress. Fortress has them in his book. And I've been to those churches and they are beautiful. It would make you very, very proud to know how these churches are ordered, how they're organized, and how they have lasted. Right. He's very, mm -hmm. very proud of some of these churches. Um, I don't know. We have some other historical churches that you can go to, but you guys look it up for the historical black churches, and we'll give you credit for, for some of those visiting those. Um, so just to visit and, like, what do we bring you um, to show, you know, that we visited? That you visit? Usually, I have my students um, bring something back. 
some literature or something or take pictures. Mm. Okay. okay. Uh, like, I, I have taught um, church uh, art, church history art, church history through art, and I've had the, ch the church uh, students visit the museum. Yeah, and then the um, Dr. Butler also, not to cut you off, but uh, also when she taught the Old Testament and New Testament advanced research, uh, she gave us a listing of places that we could go, different places. Yeah. For me, I chose the synagogue. Yeah, that was the most awesome experience on the planet. Yeah, to go there, to be able to touch the canon, to participate in the Shabbat service awesome if you ever get a chance to go to a synagogue please go right so let's let's, let's look at some of those uh, think outside the box and go to your black churches and really see our church history black churches we have a black history but the black church history that church has historically held us up that's where the teaching came from the training the education mm -hmm. the way we even dress the way we think uh civil rights all of this thing we'll see that when we study portrait okay In, anything else i thank you for reading because you help me when you have read the book and you can contribute okay so for the midterm i'm not sure how i'll do it i do have the test already made up but but for the last class i think and, and i'm not sure i think dr george was in the well was there I just had you present something. Yes. Was that what we did the last time? Yeah, we had we had we had presentations uh, for the midterm, yeah. and then the final was the actual. Right. Final. So I think that's the way we'll do it this time. It, I have one student present on Islam. Uh, mm -hmm. Just just tell me what happened with Islam. I don't think I have that now. Let me see. Uh, I had it. I just was looking at it for the last class that I had, but I, that's what we probably do. So get ready, know the subject, and we'll have you present on some. One student will present on uh, Islam, and maybe one will talk about the Reformation. One will talk about the church in America, uh, different uh, uh, heresies and so forth. We'll give you an option. I'll give you the subjects, and you can choose that for your midterm. Okay. okay. No yeah. writing or anything like that, but for the final, I do have to give you the final so I can kind of give you some kind of grade. Okay. And All right. Also, um, if, if you you say I didn't do so well in the final, well, guess what? You visited one of the historic black churches. I'll give you credit for that. Okay. Okay. Make up your your makeup your. Maybe you got eighty percent. Maybe you need ten more percent or something like that. You'll get credit. Okay. Right. All right, and we are getting ready to be dismissed. Beautiful, beautiful. And I beautiful just lecture. Pray Thank you. Pray for the school. The school is on my heart, always has been, but more than ever now because our enrollment is so low. Pray for this school because it has done great, marvelous things. It has turned out great people. Okay. And Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we're beyond grateful. Father, we thank you because you've been merciful. Yes. You've been real good to us. Help us to see, Lord. Help us to see, Lord. Open our eyes so that we might see how you have kept us danger unseen, unseen. How you have brought us through. Thank you for coming in, Lord, and teaching this class, oh Lord. I can do nothing without you. You are the teacher. Thank you for your much, yes. Holy Spirit. Thank you for all each student. I'm mindful, oh God, to give you the praise and the glory. And take no credit for what you have done, what you're about to do. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. God bless you all. Amen. God bless, bless you. Have a beautiful all. week. See you next week. Oh, my. Jacque. Yes. Jacque. Jacquees. Jacqueline, mm -hmm. I thought it's really, yeah. Dr. Butler, that's my invite. She's my invitation. She's my invite. Oh. Mm -hmm. And she's taking the class. And mm -hmm. she's taking another class. Yeah. Oh, look at you. <laughs> yeah, you got me tonight. 
you got me tonight. I wasn't oh, too please. active in the class because I was when I don't when I do that, I was listening because I don't have the knowledge of the history yet. So I was doing a lot of listening and writing a lot of notes. So next class, I'll be able to talk because I'm about to do a lot of um, dictionary work of these words that I don't know. Me and so too. I was doing a lot of listening. That's why when you were saying stuff, I wasn't talking because I was doing a lot of listening. Back of the book. And when you find the word in the back of the book, it'll tell you where to go. And that'll give you the definition right there in the book. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote, I saw you told us that to go to the back of the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Lord, I thank you. Yes. You just don't know, saints. Thank you. I'm like Sister Jacqueline. I didn't mm -hmm. come to this school to teach. Mm -hmm. But the Lord knew different. He knows yeah. different about you. You just right. came because Sister Janice told you to come. So I got better plans for you, sister. Right. Come on. When she invited me, when I came to the first one, when she invited me and I came and sat in on the first one, right. and then the next day she said, what did you think? Do you want to join? I already knew it because it grabbed my entrance. You know, I was raised in church. I love God. But when you mentioned the history, I don't know that. And I would love to learn that history. And so it really intrigued me. And when Miss Miss Janice, she followed up with me, I told her, I want to do it. I want both classes I really enjoyed. And then when you told us last week to check out the black churches, I did that. And I got a lot of notes on Second yeah. Baptist Church. Yeah. And I was amazed because Martin Luther King said Second Baptist Church was his West Coast home. He did a lot of preaching there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm old enough to, to have been around him. I saw him once in person. And uh, instead of getting his autograph, I got Sammy Davis Jr.'s autograph. Ooh. They were both right there. Wow. I ran wow. and got Sammy Davis Jr.'s autograph. Should have been getting Martin Luther King's <laughs> autograph. <laughs> yes, Victory Baptist, boy, that church in my childhood, I'm Pentecostal. But I tell you, they had an influence. Right. I, I was looking at the pictures and I was, and then they were saying the double ACP did a lot of events there yep. and there, um, Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. And it's sad because, you know, when you were in college and you, I took up art history, you didn't learn about these black churches. Mm -hmm. I'm 47 years old and I'm learning right now from you, but it's so interesting. So that's what grabbed me. And also God showed me the way and, you know, my mentor, Miss Janice, she's the best. Good. Hey, Amen. Hi, Prophetess Jackson. Good for you. Jackson. Good for you. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm <laughs> Sorry, so excited. We love you, Dr. Butler. We are excited about the things of the Lord and what he is doing in this course and in this college. Yes. yes. And Sister Cheryl, thank you. Yeah. Oh, my God. You just don't know. Thank you. What you're doing for us and us. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jacquees, is it? Mm hmm Can you be encouraged? Because I'm over 60, and I didn't know anything about church history. And uh, I was reluctant about going back to school. You know, all the different things you think about. But mm -hmm. I am so glad it is the best decision I could have ever made. So you I'm know, glad I'm our paths have crossed. And yeah, we're going to have- I'm glad you here. did, too, because the first night when I heard you said say that, I was thinking, I said, oh, I want to tell her, honey, it's never too late. I don't care how old you are because when I graduated from, I'm a chef. When I graduated from culinary art school, I had two men in my class that was 60 years old. And wow. we were for them. We was like, y'all better do it, you know, because it's never too late. Thank God. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I got the church history from Dr. Garen Harden. And so, uh, but I, I majored in history. I started my major in history, ancient history and medieval history and all of that history. Didn't know church history, but I knew mm -hmm. European history. Yeah. Didn't know church history. Thank you know what I'm saying? Until I got to Dr. Garen Harden. So thank God because he leads the way, man. 
Love you. Didn't want to hold y'all. Let's let's love you. Yes, I'm blessed. Love you all. Have a good week. Love you guys too. And I'll, you soon. I'll be ready next week. <laughs> yeah, but Jackson showed out on y'all. Yes, I know. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. She showed us up. And oh, she, no, she motivated us. Sharing. She, she motivated us. She oh, no. She's, she's very. Good. We had a ladies' conference one time, and they did a game. And Miss Janice was answering all the questions. I told her, You're going to teach me because you <laughs> went and all. She went to all the scriptures real fast and everything. And I said, you're going to teach me because you good. <laughs> Love you all. God bless you. All right, Dr. J. We coming. We coming. I know. We That's right. <laughs> only our cohorts in this class, I'm, I'm going to suggest we go and do a, um extracurricular activity together. The Lord says the same. I like that. Yes. I like that idea. I'm happy yes. to drive. I'll come pick y'all up. Okay. 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 Hey, hey. All so right. Let's put our get pants together and make that happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Love